Okay, so today we're going to have a look at um, custom modes and, and how to set them up on a Canon camera. So this is the 5D Mark III and you can see here on the mode dial we've got the usual program, shutter, priority, aperture priority, manual, bulb. And then we've got C1, C2 and C3. And these refer to um, the custom modes. So these are user programmable. So um, before you set up a custom mode, um, you're going to need to be in, um, you don't want to be in actually in one of the custom modes, although you could be if you wanted to just um, modify the settings that you already had assigned to those. But if you're starting from scratch, you probably you want to be in, in one of the, the main modes. So I'm going to be in manual and uh, show you how to set one up. So something that I do um, every so often is, is bracketed shots. Uh, particularly for say sunrise or sunset, uh, I don't tend to use filters, so I want to bracket my exposures. Um, obviously, it doesn't actually take that long to set up, but by having it pre-set up, I can just go to C C1, and it's ready to go. So um, I'm in manual at the moment, and what I want to do now is choose the settings that I want to assign to a custom mode. So um, I'm not going to want, in this example, I'm not going to want to shut speed that fast, but I'd set it, you know, somewhere as a starting point. Um, typically, I'm shooting landscape, so I'm going to want um, some good depth of field, so I'll put it around sort of f11. Typically, I'm shooting on a tripod, so I don't want a high ISO. Because I am bracketing, I want, um, it doesn't need to be high speed continuous, but I want some sort of form of continuous shooting so that I can reel off more than more than one shot. So that's part of the settings. And then in the menu, um, you know, you can change any of these settings and, and, and assign these settings. So in this example, I want to do bracketing. So I'm just going to do one stop either side. Um, it gives me a starting point. Set that. go to custom shooting mode and I want to register the settings set and then I choose which button I'm, I'm assigning them to. So I want to assign it to C1 so I just press set. Okay. And it'll, so it's applied those settings. So now if I, so I'm on manual, if I, you're not going to see any change here, but if I switch to C1, uh, you can see it's got those settings but if i um i don't know, say we go to aperture priority you can see my my settings are different um we've got a different aperture etc so if i want to go back to c1 it, they remember those settings that those settings are always program programmed in if i'm if i'm shooting at the time as I say, this is this is just a base setting, so I can say that one stop's not enough. I can increase that, um, shoot away. Um, but if I turn the camera off, come back to the camera and go back to C1, it will go back to the original settings that I registered. So one stop difference. But I have found it really useful uh, recently. So. Um, as part of my, you know, getting fit regime and getting out with the camera. Um, I've been doing a lot more sort of wildlife, but at the same time taking landscapes. And most of the time I spend my time in manual. Um, but, you know, I might see a bird or whatever. And, to you know, if I'm if taking a, a you know, a landscape shot, um, it's going to be very different settings to, right, suddenly spotting a bird. And, and trying to capture that. So um, what I've assigned to C2 is some very different settings, but what it does mean is in a very short space of time, all I've got to do is turn my dial into C2 and I've got completely different settings and I'm ready to shoot. And yeah, you know, these are quite key settings for this scenario. So um, typically I'm, I'm gonna be shooting at the longest length of my lens at 600 mil. So I wanna keep my shutter speed high. 
Um, I'm going to keep the lens, you know, depending on the light scenario, I'm going to try and keep the lens um, quite wide open um, and I'm um, going to keep my eye so um, up. Um, still, still raw plus small JPEG, but difference here. So if I'm shooting, um, you know, primarily birds, I've put it onto spot uh, metering because I want the exposure set on on that subject. And um, the other difference here is um, I've got silent continuous shooting. Well, Canon Canon call it silent shooting, but it's not it's not really silent, but it's a lot quieter um, than the you know the normal continuous shooting. And what else have I done? So I've actually disabled the beep. I like the beep normally uh, for focus confirmation, but you know shooting wildlife and trying to be uh, a little bit more discreet. So I've disabled that. So yes, yeah, so auto power off. So I normally have this set quite low, um, you know, typically one or two minutes just to save on on battery. But I guess one of the disadvantages maybe of the custom modes is if I let the camera go to sleep. If I change, say, I change the um, the ISO. Uh, you know, it's a bright sunny day. I've got I've got good light. I don't need to be as high as eight hundred. When the camera um, even if it's still on, if it goes to sleep as such, um, when you wake it again with a shutter button, um, it will recall those original settings that you set. So it would then, you know, but I can demonstrate it by turning the camera off and turning the camera back on. It's going to go back to ISO 800. So what I was finding was, you know, I'd, I'd be shooting something, I would maybe, you know, walk walk for a little while, get the camera back out and um, it would jump back up to ISO 800 and, and my settings had slightly changed. So for by changing my auto power off for 15 minutes, it just gives me that, that breathing space. Those are just two use cases, two use cases for me, uh, C1 for bracketing and C, C2 for sort of my you know, wildlife.